What's up guys? So this week has been very Mass Effect out for me. So I'm feeling the N7. Like I may or may not have N7 socks, but I mean, that's just besides, besides the point. So as much as I wanna talk about my N7 socks, I'm gonna talk about the trailer. So the first thing we see when, when the video starts, I keep trying calling it a trailer, but it's more of a behind the scenes. When it first starts, we see uh, like a liftoff type of sequence of a rocket or a, a shuttle or whatever it is, um, and like satellite in space. And I think these images have started to become part of Mass Effect Andromeda to symbolize exploration, advancement, um, and the resilience of of mankind or of the races in the galaxy and then the narrator starts and some people have actually said is that a character is that the main character unless mac walters is voicing the character no that's mac walters worlds where adventure danger and the unknown are waiting to be discovered and some of them are around the the existence of the Reapers and, and where they first came from. And then the beautiful Tempest ship just appears out of nowhere. And that's a big point to make that it just comes out of nowhere. There's no mass relay around there. It seems to just come out of like high, hyperspace, which seems to be your personal ship, like the Normandy. It looks very similar to the Normandy. So I thought, especially from the back, so I thought maybe this is a Turian type of uh, model. The colors don't represent Alliance. They represent more of the N7, it looks like an N7 ship. I love this shot because we see the Krogan and the Solarian for the first time on the right side. But another thing that I really love about this shot is that the galaxy map, what seems to be the galaxy map, is now in the helm. So you now, it looks like you're now looking outside at what you're, what you're seeing. We see a really cool shot of the N7 character, which was the same character from the previous trailer, the first trailer, which was confirmed by Bioware to not be the protagonist. And this is very important. Another important thing to, to, that, that really jumped out to me um, before I jump into theories is look at the settlements. The settlements seem to be pretty established. Um, and for you to have just arrived, uh, which is what we have been told, that you wake up and you're there. But these settlements look like they were already there, like they were established already. This Asari, I really love this Asari because she looks young. She looks playful. I love her, her facial expressions. Those types of facial expressions make me think that they're including um, not just motion capture, body motion capture, but maybe even facial, um, which would be really, really cool. I really hope they're doing that because I'm a big fan of facial expressions um, in games. So in this shot, I thought she was, she was at gunpoint. If you look at it closely, it doesn't look like a gun. Like there's no muzzle on it. It looks serrated, but not sharp enough to be a knife. And she doesn't look too scared. To me, she looks a bit disappointed, kind of like she's being reprimanded, like, you know, kind of like, whoops. Well, it's obviously metallic. Like it does look like some kind of machine. So I thought, what if it's a, like a robot or something? Like maybe even somebody like, what if it's like a finger? Like a, a robot, like pointing at her, like, hey, stop it. This white armor is Alliance. And this one is a male. This looks like a wreckage of what seems to be a shuttle, those Kodiak shuttles. And it looks like you and a, and a Krogan, or at least these two characters, are um, investigating around this, this wreckage. It doesn't look like you were in the wreckage because they look like they're totally fine. Like if you were in that wreckage, you'd probably be really hurt. When did this wreckage happen? Who was here? If you just got here to Andromeda, did another team, did, did another one of your team members go out and just like crash and you went, to, when did this happen? That's, that's a big uh, question that I have is when were these settlements created? When did this wreckage happen? Again, we see the same white Alliance armor. You could see features on this, char on this character and pay attention to the haircut. 
I love this shot. I think this was one of my favorite shots of the whole trailer. Um, and the sound, I just love the way it sounds. And I'm a huge Mako fan, so of course I was going to like this. But I think it's the Mako leaving the Tempest, maybe while the Tempest is moving. And again, the same Alliance uh, armor. Um, I c you can't really tell if it's male or female. I at first I thought it was male, but I was like, you can't really tell because the, the monster is just whipping the person around a, a lot. And the monster looks like the one that we saw earlier, but this one looks infected. Like this one looks almost um, like it's got this green stuff glowing on it and even like on fire. I don't know if this is just the way that these creatures are in Andromeda or if something else more sinister is going on. And again, we see the White Alliance armor, but this time she's female. Well, I saw some people saying that there was a Quarian on the back. There's three. There's the, the, the female Alliance. Um, there's a Krogan that looks different, either very young or is probably a female Krogan. The, the, the head almost looks like if it were Quarian, but I think it's just the, the form of the helmet. Because if you look at the legs, those are not Quarian legs. This is most likely a human or an Asari. This shot is probably the most important, at least when it comes to my theory and all that. In my opinion, this is the most important shot in the whole trailer. So here we see a Krogan holding on to a character and dropping him. But if you look closely, since it's dark, some people have missed that there's actually a human kneeling down watching this happen. And if you look carefully, that armor looks very similar to the N7 armor, to the character that we saw in the, in the first trailer. If you look at the helmet, it's almost identical. If you look closely, if you brighten the colors and all that, the insides look like they're red, like that armor. And this person that they're dropping um, is most likely the protagonist. So it's already been confirmed that the female at the end of the trailer is the protagonist, but I said in my reaction that I had, a, I had predicted that they were going to show a trailer with both protagonists, male and female, and I think that's what's going on here. Yeah, Bioware's saying, yeah, that's the protagonist at the end, but I think they're probably throwing us a curveball and not telling us that there's actually the male protagonist is in there as well. The characters that we've seen with the White Alliance uh, armor. We saw the female. There's a, when the character is shooting at that big creature that looks like the Yogg in the desert, that's, that's you. Like you are playing as that character and that character is male. The character in front of the galaxy map is male and it's a buzz cut. The character that is doing the biotic punch is wearing the same white alliance armor and if you look in the, in the, in the visor of the helmet, he's got a buzz cut. The guy that is being dropped, buzz cut. I think that buzz cut guy is the male protagonist. This next shot is another one of the most important um, shots in my opinion in this trailer. This is leaving Earth. At least that's what I think it is. I think it's leaving Earth because these are shuttles from the Milky Way. These are a bunch of shuttles leaving a planet that looks a lot like Earth. And it's, I mean, it could just be the lights, but it looks like it's burning, like there's something bad going on there. And this is most likely during the Reaper War in Mass Effect 3, before the Reapers uh, brought their full-on assault at the end of Mass Effect 3 when the Reapers were all, you know, attacking all the, the, the Alliance and all the races outside of Earth with the Citadel and all that. Before that, if this was during that time when they were evacuating Earth, none of this would have survived. None of these shuttles would have survived the evacuation because it was insane there. Like, Reapers were shooting everything down. And also, if you look at the space around these ships, there are no Reapers. If you remember in Mass Effect 3, that scene where you see all the ships fighting the Reapers and all that, it was insane. Like, you could not, you could not evacuate anyone without losing, like, half of them, maybe. Um, it would have been smart for them to evacuate a lot of people before the Reapers arrived. So this is kind of, like, tied to that theory that people say Plan B, that call, they call Plan B, which was evacuating people... 
uh, getting a lot of the races out and they were, they were doing this in case they failed so that the races of the Milky Way could still go on and not have fallen to the Reapers. And if you look at the ships, they're also the same, the same types of ships that were there. But then it shows the shuttles and it's almost like a reveal, like kind of like you saw this in Mass Effect 3. Yeah, they're all leaving. But what you didn't see was what was up above. And you see these huge ships, which I think are the ones that are called the Ark. But I thought it was just one. But there's at least three, maybe four of these. This is plan B. And the question is, did Shepard know about this? That was, that's one of the things that, that kind of like eats at me is, did Shepard know about this? If this is plan B, getting these people off and those ships are the ones that got everyone to Andromeda because those ships, if you look at them closely, they look like a mixture of a mass relay and the Citadel. It looks like a moving mass relay. And it makes sense because it's like, how did they even get to Andromeda? Like how, how did they get there? You know, because without a mass relay, they would have taken years unless they found a wormhole or something like that by chance. There was probably a side project going on um, that was that where they were creating these ships, these mobile, maybe these, this was already in progress for years. Maybe this was something that the Alliance or the, 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 um, the council or something, they were already making maybe, um, or maybe even Cerberus, I don't know. But maybe they were already making these transports, these ships, because it was something that they were planning on, whether it was related to the Reapers or not. But it was something that they, they, they wanted to, 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 to eventually master a mobile mass, mass relay or like, you know, something similar to the Citadel um, that could take them far, further for exploration. And when the Reapers hit, they were like, we need to use them now. And a lot of them must have been military. A lot of them must have been so that they could survive. Like this must have been an N7 operation because um, we do know that there was N7 operations going on uh, during the Reaper attack. And uh, it was no longer just an alliance program. It was now open to all races, uh, the N7, because they needed uh, people to fight. I want to say Shepard knew about this, but it's like, why didn't they ever say anything? I don't know. Some people were like, well, it was on a, on a need to know basis and Shepard didn't need to know. At first I was kind of like, how could Shepard not have known? Like that sucks. Like this is, this is us like continuing the Shepard legacy, you know? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Shepard didn't even know about that. So. So this character was confirmed today by Mac Walters that this was your protagonist, um, the female protagonist. And she's waking up what seems to be from like some form of stasis in order to survive uh, space travel. And this kind of indicates already that maybe a long time has passed. Because if they hadn't gone into this cryogenic stasis type of thing, um, maybe they wouldn't have survived the the trip because it would it would take so long, maybe a long like years, uh, which kind of makes sense because this is a different galaxy. It's not just a different system. This is a different galaxy. <sighs> we made it. And that line, we made it. I love it because it's kind of st stands for so many, so many on so many levels like okay we made it to andromeda but it's also like we made it we're alive like we survived not only the trip but we survived the chaos from the milky way like we are going to go on we are going to live on it's kind of like this like this sigh of relief you know so that's pretty much the trailer so now let's go back and let me tie in some of my theories so mac walters did not just uh, say that this was the female was your the the protagonist, but he also said that he also confirmed that this is writer uh, that that is the surname of your protagonist, which is something that a lot of fans were already speculating because of the dog tags in the N seven uh, trailer in the N seven day trailer. There was some dog tra tags on like the dashboard of a ship or something like that that said writer. Uh, so and and most likely. Um, 
a tribute to the, the female astronaut, Sally Ride. But Mac Walters also said that there was a family. I love when they put family in. Like in Dragon Age 2, I loved that you had a brother and a sister. Uh, so, and the mom. It just added another level in your relationship with somebody. I, I had already said this in my analysis of the, pre, of the first trailer where I was like, maybe this is a family member or a friend or something. This character, this N7 ca character. I think the big twist, that like I said previously, the big twist is that the N7 guy is the enemy. That is the threat. The threat is your own people. Maybe even your own blood. That was one of my pr one of my earliest theories that that guy is a family member and maybe those tags are his because you're a writer. But why aren't you wearing your tags? Why are they on the dashboard? Those tags must be your brother's tags or that N7 guy. Um, or another theory that I have, the brilliance of the way that Bioware has been showing it off. If this is the way, if this is their plan with this N7 guy, the brilliance of it is that they showed you the bad guy first. And I love that. Like they messed with us showing us the bad guy where you're like, oh yeah, we're going to Andromeda and all that. But if you go back and you look at that first trailer, like I went back and I watched it and I was like, it, it, it all of a sudden, looks different to me. If you remember, that guy was going through the galaxy map or whatever, and he chose a planet, and immediately he takes out his gun, like, let's go kill us some fools. And it, and now, before, I was I didn't think any anything of it. I was like, yeah, in seven. But now I'm like, why is he going in hostile already? Like, why? Why is he taking out his gun? He hasn't even gotten there and he's already ready to kill fools. That whole assault of them like going towards them and killing these people. What if that's this team? Maybe if this N7 guy is your brother, let's just say this is your brother. And is just like, he's going on a conquest. Like he is taking over everyone and he's like, I am boss. And you guys are going to be my subjects. Like he's trying to subjugate uh, what he thinks. I had said this in, a, in an unreleased Mass Effect talks that I re recorded not long ago, but I probably release it soon. I was talking about the possibility of you going in seeing these inhabitants, these, these inhabitants of Andromeda as creatures, as savages, kind of like in during the pilgrims or during the the uh the inquisition or whatever of the like the spanish in the in the in south america and central america um you know the indians they treat they treated them like savages because they were different or they weren't as advanced in their technology but they weren't like you know the mayans were some of the most uh amazing mathematicians that have ever lived in history um so I was like, this is probably what's going on in Andromeda because you are the alien. Like you are coming into this galaxy and you're trying to find a new home. But this N7 guy seems like he wants to have it like with an iron fist. And then the, the song, like the song makes sense now. Ghost Riders in the Sky. Like it, it's not, I, I had said this in my, in my trailer an analysis of the first trailer. I was like, Ghost Riders in the, si in the Sky, that song is not, is not about a good, a good person. It's actually about something um, bad, like something that uh, you are uh, like a curse, like something that you're bound to keep doing over and over and over, and you're going to be damned doing it for eternity. Like I said, if that is what they're doing, it just it's brilliant that they showed you the villain first and made you think that this is somebody like a friend or because it was like, okay, well, that's not the protagonist. Okay, well, maybe this is somebody that, you know, this is your team or something. <laughs> and you immediately saw them as good. And, and it's like, wait, like, what if this is like, this isn't normal. Like, this isn't right. He is the threat. He is the Saren, um, which I am extremely excited about 
that the villain is actually a person. I'm really, really hope, hoping that this is the villain because we are now going to see, we first saw N7 as a heroic representation by Shepard and it's like, oh yeah, N7. But now we're seeing the other side to N7. The, and, and I'm sure that this isn't like, you know, full on evil, this guy. I'm sure he, you know, the best villains are the ones that think that they are uh, justified, the ones that you could relate to that uh, are doing s something m with drastic measures, um, but they think that they're right for doing it. They're doing it for reasons that they feel are right. Um, so I'm really, really hoping that this is the case because those make the best villains, especially when it's a person, like when the villain is a person, Saren, uh, Loghain, those are usually the best villains. When it's something so big, something very galactic, like the Reapers, it's like, it's such a huge threat that you can't really, you can't really narrow it down to one thing. It's like, it's not, it's not something that, that you could relate to. It's not something... You know, it's something so mysterious and it's like, I don't understand them, you know? So for them to narrow that down, that galactic size enemy or threat, to narrow it down to one person and possibly even a family member, um, and in a way where you would expect it, where you would have never expected it because it's just, this is N7. This is the same group that you were in. You know, this is Shepard. This represents Shepard. Like, like how dare you? It's, it's amazing. It makes for a great plot twist, I think. I, I think it makes for great storytelling, so I cannot wait. Um, I hope that that's the case. In one of my theories, he is the brother. He's just become so obsessed with, uh, like, you know, conquesting Andromeda by force. The Iron Fist, the whole, you know, Alexander the Great, I'm gonna, you know, kind of like the Nazis, they're gonna just take over everything by force, whether they have to subjugate the inhabitants of planets that were already there, it doesn't matter. Like they are going to take it by force because they need to survive, that kind of thing. And you are the sibling, most likely the youngest, and you are not in seven. You're probably lower rank because the, the, in the armor that you're wearing, you are never wearing any N7, N7 armor. You are only wearing Alliance. Um, whether it's the male or the female that we see, it's always Alliance. Uh, and it's always that white armor. And they, I think they made that on purpose so that you could tell who is who. The white is the, the protagonist and the black is the villain. So this could be your older brother, uh, N7, higher rank. He's probably in charge. Uh, and he's doing things in a way that you don't agree. So when they leave Earth, the people that left, the first team that left, that N7 operative that left was this N7 guy. And this whole thing of leaving Earth before the Reapers got there, before the endings, makes sense. It makes, it, it's a really good way of avoiding the endings of what ending did you choose, uh, you know, all that. None of them, none of that applies to these people because they left. I'm guessing that this is kind of like life rafts with, um, you know, like abandoned ship. Uh, and I think people started to arrive, uh, at different points. Um, so the first team that arrived was probably the Sin 7 guy. They started to establish camps. That's why I was like, when were these camps established? They looked pretty established. Now, either you come in because the Sin 7 guy kills your family member. Your family member was part of the team with him, maybe another N7 or something. Um, Maybe he kills him or her. Another theory is this N7 guy is your brother. And you know of what's going on. And you're like, I need to help him. Like, I need to stop him. Like, he's he's ruining everything. Like, we're trying to find a new home and he's ruining our chances. You know, our name, our reputation. Um, and we're just going to go from war to, to another war. The, the guy that they're holding by the leg, the Krogan that drops him, maybe that's in the beginning, like in the beginning of the game the leaving earth thing and and when this this guy uh drops that character they actually kill him like what if they actually kill him and that's your family like what if that was your that was your brother and this guy turned on him and killed him and that's why you have the dog tags on the dashboard of your ship because those aren't yours those are your brothers that this guy killed and you're going 
to to find out what happened to get some some sense of of understanding maybe even revenge if you're renegade depending on how you play you need to go find out what happened the only confusion to me though is that that guy that is being held by the leg looks like the male protagonist um the same buzz cut and all that so i'm like if that's the protagonist and you're just that because it makes sense also that that could be the protagonist the male protagonist and the female protagonist at the end um you know depending on whether you're male or female that scene where they're holding you from the leg you that that's the male scene but it could have been that same the, the same scene with the female maybe he drops you or something but you survive a bigger possibility that this n7 guy is your is your brother um and you're probably going to try to help him, to try to turn him, to try to stop him from what he's doing. And maybe he's even doing something even more sinister. Maybe he's trying, because this, remember that monster that looks all poisoned? What if he's doing something? Another shot that um, shows that you are fighting your own kind is that scene where it shows the female, uh, which I think is a protagonist, the female protagonist in the White Alliance armor in that scene. They are shooting at humans. So that's probably the team that is following the N7 guy. And there was more of these huge ships that seem to be called the Ark. Uh, so maybe you were on one of them. Maybe you went to a different location in Andromeda. Maybe the teams arrived in different locations. I mean, this is a huge galaxy. So maybe this N7 guy, your brother, uh, was somewhere and you were somewhere else. And you start hearing of what's going on and you're just like, what? Uh, there's already wreckages that you go and investigate and maybe you're looking for this guy. Maybe you're looking for your brother because you don't know where he is. Um, and you're going and investigating wreckages and stuff like, you know, what has he done? You're just following the blood trail. The Andromeda races must see a human and they, they, everyone's the same. Where it's like, those Milky Way races are here to kill us and we've got to be hostile. So let me know in the comments down below, do you think that the N7 guy is your sibling and we saw both protagonists in the trailer, the male and the female, and the, the person that they're actually dropping is your protagonist, like it could have been male or female, or it is your brother that dude that they're dropping and the N7 guy isn't related to you. Uh, and they, uh, and that, that scene with the guy being dropped is actually the death of your sibling and then you come in to save the day. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your ideas in the comments down below. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys later.